Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be guiding you on how to send data from Raspberry Pi to Google's Firebase. And for this tutorial, we're going to be sending DST11 temperature and humidity sensor data from Raspberry Pi to Google's Firebase. If you are not subscribed to this channel yet, kindly click on the subscription button and click on the notification bar so that you will be informed when I drop a new tutorial on Internet of Things. In previous tutorials, I looked at how to send data from Raspberry Pi to IBM Cloud. If you want to learn more about that, you can check that in the playlist. So, in this tutorial, we are going to be sending data from Raspberry Pi to Google's Firebase. So let's get started. First, I'm going to show you how to set up the hardware. So now let me walk you through the hardware connection. Here yeah, I have my DHT and I have my resistor. It's a 10K resistor. I have my bed body and I have my Raspberry Pi. Yeah. So as you can see, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 for this tutorial. I just got this newly. So I've already set up my connections. I've connected the jumper wires to the Raspberry Pi. So this is the first one. This is connected to pin one of the Raspberry Pi. And this is going to be the data pin. It's connected to pin four. On the Raspberry Pi that is GPIO4, not actually pin 4 but GPIO4, and this is connected to pin number 39, which is a ground pin. So don't forget this is pin 1, this is GPIO4. If you have, if you have to count, GPIO4 falls to pin number 7. So this is pin number 7, which is GPIO4, and this is pin number 39, which is a ground pin. So I'm going to plug in, I'm going to put this to one side. I'm going to plug in my DHC sensor A. And in this session, this is pin one, pin two, three, and four. So my DHC sensor will come here and I have my 10K resistor in between pin one and pin two. So I just go back and plug this in. So I have my tank resistor in between pin 1 and pin 2. So as I have a, this is a pin which is pin 1, 3 volts on the Raspberry Pi. It comes to pin 1. And this is the data pin. This is GPL4, pin number 7 on the Raspberry Pi. It comes to pin 2. So pin 3 will be left unconnected while the ground pin will go to the last pin which is pin 4. So this is the old setup. So I'm using 3 pin, don't forget, pin 1, pin 7 and pin 39. So this is my ground. This is the VCC which is pin number 1, 3 volts on the Raspberry Pi and this is GPL4 which is pin 7 on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to connect this to my computer now and do all necessary setup. So I'll be connecting my Raspberry Pi to my computer via headless so that a lot of things will be easy for me to do. I'll just slot this in and connect this to my computer. Then I'll power on the Raspberry Pi. Of course, before we can send data from Raspberry Pi to Google's Firebase, we need to set up our Firebase. To receive data from our Raspberry Pi. So, if you don't have a Google account, now is the time to create one. I've just searched for Firebase in my browser. So, just go to firebase.google.com to access Firebase console. Here we are in Firebase. So, click on Get Started and we'll be di directed to Firebase console. So, I'm being directed to my Firebase account. If you don't have one, just create a Google account and you have access to Firebase. So what we need to do is, if you are just starting, getting started, you are not going to see any projects on this particular page. So just see a blank page. But here I have three projects created already. I'm just click, going to click on add projects to create a new one. So click on add projects. And then we have to give our project a name. So here I'm going to call it Raspberry Pi. Or I've just simply used 
RPI DHT monitor. So I'm going to call it Raspberry DHT monitor and I click on continue. So step two, leave everything as it is and click again on continue. You have to select an account here. So select your Google account. You're going to see it from the drop down. I'm going to select my Google account and I'm going to click on create project. So our project is being created. So here we have that. Your new project is ready. So just click on continue to access the dashboard. So this is Firebase dashboard. We are, we are going to be making all our setup. So the first thing we are going to do is to do the authentication. Then we create a real-time database. So on the left pane, click on build and click on authentication. So again, we are going to click on get started. And over here, it asks for signing method. So under this, click on email and password and enable this and also enable email link so click on save so yeah we are going to add if you come back to user so click on add user so yeah, i'm going to give my email as a user of this database and you can create a password that you are going to be using with this user here so i'm going to give it my own password So RPI DST, again click on add user. So with this, we are done creating a user for our database. So come back to left pane and click on real time database. Here we are going to be creating a database where we have all our temperature and humidity data coming into. So click on create database. And I'm going to leave this as it is US states, US central one. I'll click on next. So in setup database, just click on start in test mode and click on enable. So with this, we have our database completely set up. So before I move to the Raspberry Pi, there's some testing settings that we need to take note of. So the first is a database URL. Also, if you come to this drop down option, we have all the list of the project that we have. If Currently, I am on Raspberry DHT monitor, which is the database I'm working on. So to access the settings for this particular database, click on settings and then click on project settings. So here we have the web API key. Also, we are going to, we are going to be copying this. I'm using it in our code. So that's it. And now we can set Firebase up to receive data from our Raspberry Pi. So now I'm going to be doing configurations on the Raspberry Pi to send data to Firebase. After setting up our database on Firebase, we also need to set up Raspberry Pi to be able to send data successfully to Google's Firebase. So I'm going to come again to my terminal and I'm going to be installing a Python module we are going to use for this, which is called PyRebase. So type in pip3 install PyRebase. So with this, I have successfully installed the requirement for me to send data from the Raspberry Pi to Google's Firebase. And just like any other cloud-based database, before we can successfully send data to Google's Firebase, we need some kind of authentication. And now we are going to be grabbing three things from our database and input them into our code before we can send data successfully to the database. So the first thing we are going to be needing is our database URL, which is what is displayed here at the top of our database. So I'm going to copy this. And note that we can directly copy from your personal computer to the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to be copying this and be saving them in a text file. Then I'm going to send the text file to my Raspberry Pi so I can directly copy and paste. So I'm going to paste this in a notepad document. So that's my database URL. 
also we are going to be using copying the api key i showed the other time so click on settings and click on the project settings so we are going to be grabbing the project id and also the web api key so copy this and paste it in the notepad document again and lastly the web api key so i'm going to grab this and paste it in the document so take note this is my database url this is my project id and this is my web api key so with these three documents with these three information we can send data to our real time database so what i'm going to do here is that i'm going to save this on my document as Firebase details. And I'm going to go back to my Raspberry Pi window. So which is what I have here. So I'm going to be needing all the details in my Raspberry Pi. So I've just grabbed them. So if you come to VNC window, click on file transfer and click on send files. So from here, we can send the files that I just saved on my desktop to the Raspberry Pi. Since I can directly copy and paste. So I save it as Firebase details. So here I have the details. I'm going to open this. And then I have the details on my Raspberry Pi. So I can copy from here and directly paste it into my code. I'm going to be setting up my Raspberry Pi to read the ST11 sensor data, which are temperature and humidity. Before we can successfully read the temperature and humidity from the ST11, we have to set up our Raspberry Pi. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Adafruit Circuit Python library to get this done. So, to install the library for DHT11 on Raspberry Pi, just come to your browser. Here I'm using Chromium on my Raspberry Pi. And you can search for Adafruit DHT Raspberry Pi setup. So if you scroll down, just click on Python setup. DHT humidity sensing on Raspberry Pi or Bigubun. So I'm going to click on this link. And on this link, we are going to see instruction and details on how we can set up a Raspberry Pi to successfully read temperature and humidity from DHT 11. So the first thing we need to do is to set up our Linux board, which is a Raspberry Pi, to use circuit Python libraries. So scroll down and click on this link, which is set up your Linux board. For using circuit python libraries so on this page we're going to be setting up our raspberry pi to use circuit python libraries so the first thing we need to do is to install the setup tools so click on this copy test i won't be typing this out on my terminal i'll just click on copy and i'm going to open the terminal and paste in the code So this is successfully done. Again, I'm going to scroll down and grab the script and run it on my terminal. So it's asking. So click just type in Y to confirm. So while waiting for this, I've just come back to this page. So after running this. We are done setting up a Raspberry Pi to use Circuit Python. So let me go back to my terminal to see the updates. It's definitely going to get stuck here. So to just save you the time, you can press Ctrl C to cancel the operation. So with this, we are good and we can continue. So I'm, I'm just go back to this page and click on the back button to go back to the original web page so i'm done with this step which is setting your linux board for 
using circuit python libraries so i just need to grab some circuit python dht library here to finish setting up my raspberry pi so i'm going to grab this which is pip install adafruit circuit python dht so copying this i'll come back to my terminal and paste it in so and lastly i'll grab the which is sudo apt get install libgpiod so again i'm going to copy this and paste it right into my terminal So with this, we are done setting up your Raspberry Pi to read DHC sensor data. So to test, I'm going to copy this code and run it on my Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to copy this and open Tony. So I open the Tony Python IDE and paste this in. So we need to do some setup to make it work. So first, I'm using DST11, so I'm going to change this to DST11, and I'm using GPIO4. So from D18, I'm going to change this to D4. So you can leave everything else as default, and with that, we are good to go. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to run it. So you can call it DHT simple test.py. If you run this by clicking on run, you're going to be seeing your temperature and humidity. But I discovered there's a problem with this. If you run it for the first time, it's going to work perfectly. When you reboot your Raspberry Pi, it's going to work perfectly. But if you try to run it again, it might not work again. So what you just need to do is to uncomment this particular line, line 14, and again change this to DST11 and change this to D4. So when you are running your code, it's going to run perfectly. So to run this, I'm going to click on run. So I'm here we have our temperature and humidity coming in. I have my temperature is 86.0 degree Fahrenheit and my humidity. So this is how you can read humidity and temperature data from DHT11 sensor. Again, I'm going to, I can read this from the terminal. So if I open my terminal, I'll just clear this. And change directory to documents. We have saved it. So I have DHT simple test.py. So to run it, I can just type Python 3 DHT simple test.py. And also on the terminal, I have my temperature and humidity coming. So that's how you can set up your Raspberry Pi to read DST11 sensor data. For our Raspberry Pi to be able to send DST data to Google's Firebase, I have edited our little DST simple test to take the data and send it to Firebase. So here I've added some few lines of code. So these are the details we need from our Firebase. This is my API key, the one I pasted on my Raspberry Pi. So you just copy it from here and paste it on your code. Also the auth domain, you're going to have your project ID, copy it and paste it before the Firebase app.com. And on database URL, just copy the database URL you copied and paste it here. And also the storage bucket, copy the project ID and paste it just before the app spot.com. So here I'm declaring my database and this is the same thing we saw for this the simple test and i've added these lines of code so yeah data is is being passed so i have my temperature and humidity prepared in a json format and i'm sending the data to firebase here so most of our data is done sending to firebase it's going to print out print send to firebase so here I'm going to run this code and go back to Firebase to test. So clicking on run. So here we can see temperature 86, 30 degrees Celsius, humidity 78, 
and it's printing out sent to Firebase. So I'm going to check my Firebase to see the response. And here on Firebase, I have humidity coming in 78 and also temperature 29. So as it's changing, it's going to be changing on Firebase. So I'm going to be introducing high humidity to my DC sensor now to see the response. So as you can see, it's changing on Firebase. As data is changing, it's changing on Firebase too. So this is real-time database. As I'm sending from the Raspberry Pi, uh, Firebase is receiving it. So that's basically how you can send data from Raspberry Pi to Google's Firebase. Note that you can edit this code anyhow you like. In case you want to send any other data to Firebase, you can just from the code edit it and send it to Firebase. Also, on the description below, I'm going to put in a code in, in the GitHub repository. I'm going to put in a link, a code to where we can send random data to Firebase. So in case you want to work on a project that does not involve DHT, but you want to send another data entirely, you can just edit the random code to send your data to Google's Firebase. So thank you very much. If you find it useful, don't forget to like and also share. And before you go, kindly subscribe to this channel and click on the notification button. So thank you, and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial.